Hey there everyone, it's Matt from Creative Reviews Productions and here we are with the Apple iPad camera connection kit. Now these two, you've probably seen them in stores, they're two little devices that look like overblown old dock connectors. Of course these are for the 30 pin docks so they're not really going to work with the iPhone 5 or any new device that happens to come out, i.e. the new iPad mini that's most likely going to be announced on October 23rd, 2012. But for now, these devices would not even work on the iPhone 5 or any small device. So before going forward with what they can do, I'm going to talk to you about what they cannot do. If you have an iPod Touch or any kind of small device, like this one for instance, you're going to find that it's unfortunately not going to work. It's not supported by it. So it's only going to be for an iPad. Just remember that when you're going into buying something. I'm going to show you here how it just does not work. Right here we have my camera. Right now I'm recording on my iPad because we have to show the camera and I only have one SD card right now. So we pop this out. I'm going to show you the first option of what you can do. We have the SD card and we're going to put it inside the SD card reader. Now of course there would be little cases around these but uh, I don't have them, I don't use them, but you will get them so you won't get any bent connectors. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on my little iPod Touch. This is the fourth generation 8 gigabyte model and of course it has the 30 pin connector. The new iPod Touch has that lightning connector. So we put it inside and we can already see this accessory is not supported by the iPod Touch. So unfortunately if you have any pictures that you want to put on from maybe a point and shoot camera or a video camera that shoots an MPEG 4, unfortunately you just cannot use it for it. So think before you buy. I don't want you guys going home and finally finding out that you can't use it. Now we're going to I'm going to try the second option here, which is a USB connector that you can attach to your camera if that's supported. What do you do? Simply put the USB connector inside. For now, we're going to put the SD card right back in the camera. Close it up. And on this camera, you do have the option of a micro USB out, as you can see right here. And my camera came with a USB cable. Now you don't have to use anything, this is proprietary for my camera, but of course if you have something that uses a micro SD, I mean a micro USB or just a regular USB, you can also use it to connect this. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down for a sec and connect this up. So of course here we're talking about things that do not work, unfortunately. It won't work on the uh, iPod Touch. So here it says you have to slide down this lens cover to shoot, but it also means slide down to access the information because it will use whatever device's battery to do this. And of course here we plug it in, and again it says this accessory is not supported by the iPod Touch, which is Kind of sad. I wish it would work because, unfortunately, the old iPod Touches had a, have a very poor camera and it's very good to be able to integrate pictures from a better point-and-shoot camera to it, but you can't do it. So we're going to move on to what does work. Here we have the new iPad, which is hardly the new iPad anymore and soon to be the old iPad when they release that new 7-inch model with the lightning connector. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug it in we have the Sony camera on, and right now it's connecting, it's accessing the pictures, in a moment it should come up here on the iPad, and there we go. Now it seems that this is a little bit shaky, it seems to have restarted the connection, so I'm going to do my best not to touch anything, and there we have the pictures. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to see the speed on this. If you have a timer at home, just be ready. I'm going to choose five pictures on here. 
one of my cat Penny, one food, a few shots in DC which I took, and if you're interested, Jumbo Slice um, on Adams Morgan in DC. Delicious pizza. So we have five pictures. Let's see how fast it takes to import them. Just hit, and I want to import selected, and here we go. Done, 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 done. That was very quick, five photos. Now this is a 16.2 megapixel camera. It's very quick. I mean, the, the megapixels are good. Pictures are very good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep these photos on here. You have the option to delete or keep anything. You can erase everything. You can upload all, import all, or delete all. It's very good. So we're gonna keep that because we want to use that later. There's a connection again. We're going to unplug it and you'll see it goes to no photos because it's the it nose is unplugged. And we're going to go to, well, it seems like it's not coming up under last import, but it will. For some reason it's not showing up now. Your last import, these five pictures would show up here. But we're going to go to all imported and we're going to choose a photo here. And with this retina display, you can see anything. It's very convenient for on the go, you know, picture review. With iPhoto, you can also adjust these pictures and do anything you want. Sorry about the light. We're gonna move that away so we don't have any glare. There. What I do is I take my photos in 16 by nine they don't fit perfectly on the iPad, but when you take a 3x4 photo, it's going to fit perfectly. So what you can do is, you can do some quick edits, enhance, and enhance this picture. And I don't know if you can see on the camera here, but it looks very good, and it's good for quick review. And this is what I actually do sometimes, is why I record video with this camera, and on the go I can make any of these creative review productions videos on my iPad and instantly upload it. So it's very convenient for anybody who's into photography or any kind of video work. So what more we're going to do is we are going to test out the SD card reader. It's going to be just about the same speed. It's nothing special, but I just want to show you that both of these do work. Simply put the SD card reader in here, stick it in the 30 pin connection at the bottom. If I can do that. There we go. And in a moment it's going to recognize the device and it's going to pull up the pictures, hopefully. If it has the time to. There it goes. After a little bit of lag we have the pictures and of course it does have memory of what pictures is uploaded onto the iPad and what it hasn't. You can see that with the little green check marks. So you know what you've already had on there and what you don't want more of. So right now we're going to choose five more pictures and take a look at the download speed. Again, you can choose whatever you'd like and you know get your stopwatch out. We're going to do five pictures again. What I find odd is maybe since I adjusted the picture with the uh, quick edit, it seems that this picture, which I did upload, is not showing up as uploaded. So maybe since I edited it, it thinks I need to re-download again. But here I have five pictures. We're going to do import and import selected. And again, done, 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 done. Now, I'm not sure if you, uh, if you see this on yours, but on the video or on your stopwatch timer, it was a little bit slower than the direct USB connection. So we're going to keep that. We're going to pull this out. You'll see no photos or videos. And for this one, it does come up in the last import, and we have our five pictures. These are all taken in DC at night with flash. This is an FRS, one of my favorite cars, and some pictures of the city, some blurry. We're going to choose this one here. Again, all these were shot in 16 by 9, so they're not going to fit perfectly. But these are very good pictures nonetheless. Nonetheless. With a quick edit, we have it there. And anything you want to do, it works very easily. Now we're going to move on to more advanced stuff. Well, not more advanced, but just more time consuming. We're going to take a quick video with this camera. 
and we're going to upload it and I'm going to show you the speed time. This is all going to be in real life. So it needs to take a second to access the memory card. And here we go. We're going to record a quick video. It's a recording video of another camera taking a video. If that interests you at all. So it's on standby. It's recording. We're going to move it around. And what we do, we're just going to look at some things. That is the old WebOS tablet. We use it now in the kitchen. It's very useful. And I'm glad they're bringing WebOS back as an open source so people can do all their own editing. I'm going to do a quick 30 second video. This is in 1080p MP4 format. Okay, it's recording. And it is done. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop open the camera, take the SD card out, and for this one we're going to use the SD card reader. Plug it in. I'm going to give it a second to access, and there we go, and there we have our new MP4 plus THM video. I'm going to click it, and import selected, and let's see how it goes. Get your time ready. And done. Very quick. Unplug it, and now we don't have any photos connected. But I think this is a very good thing. If you don't like being limited by a small camera screen, even though this one has a very high resolution, it's very useful. But if you don't like being limited, you want to be able to view your videos and your photos on a larger screen, such as the iPad, iPad's beautiful retina display, or even any iPad or tablet. I would definitely get a camera connector, but especially this one seems very useful. It's $29. And you can buy it anywhere on Apple.com, any Apple store. And if you go to Macy's at all, it's located in the E spot where you can quickly, it's like that vending machine. You've probably seen it in videos from Japan, that vending machine that sells electronics. You can even buy iPads in there too. It's very useful. So we're going to check out the video. I'm not sure if we can see the quality of it here. So it's on standby, it's recording. We're going to move it around. We're just going to look at some things. That is the old WebOS tablet. We use it now in the kitchen. It's very useful. And I'm glad they're bringing WebOS back as an open source so people can. Okay, we don't need to listen to all of this again because I'm going to be stitching this at the end of this video. So if you're interested, this is the Apple Camera Connection Kit. $29. You can buy it from almost anywhere. Just Google it and you'll find it. This has been Matthew from Creative Reviews. And find me on WordPress, Facebook, and Twitter. Subscribe, like, or dislike this. Tell me what you think about everything. And I'll see you guys next time.